all right everybody welcome to my channel and welcome to path of exile today is going to be the start of many videos for this game including a tutorial on how to basically set up your game early on so you can have a very enjoyable playing experience now this game is graphics intensive it is cpu intensive I am currently on a 3080 Ti and a 5950X running this on an NVMe drive along with 64 gigs of RAM. So it does run pretty smoothly for me, but you guys are going to need to tweak your settings depending on how your system is set up and how in-depth you want to go. First thing we are going to do is check out the options. Now, obviously I am running this at uh, pretty much 2K resolution, it is not 4K. I am running it on the Vulkan render right now. DirectX 12 is kind of glitchy after their last couple of updates. Vulkan is very smooth. I am not on VSync, but if you do want to use VSync, the best thing you can do is use um, um, Locked right here. This is um, pretty easy. It does give you pretty steady frame rates and everything, but I prefer just to keep it off. I do have triple buffering buffering enabled. This is very beneficial. I max my um, FPS at 144 and my background basically if you alt tab at 60. This basically doesn't blow your graphics card up, but yet it also keeps it pretty smooth when you're doing alt tab stuff. All right, next, no anti-lasting. You guys have to have this disabled, otherwise once you get into maps and really juicy maps, you're gonna lag like all hell and back. I do have shadows and global illumination on just to give a little better. Um, pretty much low default settings for this though. Works very well. Sun quality is, sun shadow quality is set to high, but I've noticed if I have this on low, it doesn't really matter for me. If you're running a smaller end system, I would highly recommend you set this to low. Same thing for lightings and etc. Um, bloom, leave at 100%. Depth of field, you can either leave on or off. I find it runs a little smoother with it enabled for me. The same thing for like water details and texture qualities. This is basically based on your system specs. If you're finding you're dropping FPS or you're lagging a lot, put these on the lowest settings possible. Same thing for texture filtering. I leave it at two times just because I get a little bit better of a, um, like a rendering. It's like, I, it looks like a little smoother and crisper type graphics. Um, obviously performance metrics, I have all graphs, basically when you have your um, FPS frame generator, just to see what you guys are running right now. So it's like all graphs works very well, show bars, transparency is good. Now here's the big kicker you guys got to have on. Dynamic calling enabled and resolution enabled. This basically means if your screen comes to be too cluttered and your FPS drops too much, this will automatically flip it into a lower resolution and start clearing up your um, screen a little bit of some of the graphic renderings. And it does increase your performance tenfold. So definitely have these two up. Next is engine multi-threading. I leave this enabled and target frame rate is obviously um, 60. So this is works with like um, calling, etc. In terms of game settings, I got network mode on auto. Um, we will get into item filters a little bit later in the tutorial series. Um, obviously, I don't use Ruthless at all because I do not play Ruthless. Um, key bindings, etc. You guys can kind of play with that on your own. Um, UI, it's pretty generic. You don't really need much in terms of the UI. Obviously, I have Quest Tracker up, the clock up. I don't confine mouse to windows, get the mouse zoom, login emails, definitely hide that if you guys stream. Uh, let's see, corner map, auto center on the map, landscape transparency, this basically just helps the transparency on the map and everything. And same thing for map transparency, I have map zoomed out max, so the left is zoom out max, right is zoomed in uh, nearest. All right, we got ally names, obviously. Visual sensitivity, this is kind of weird. I have this enabled, but I have screen shake disabled. I do not want my screen shaking every time uh, we pop off an item or something else. Obviously, I do. I have the large, and we do large pattern sockets, always show sockets. That is just my thing. If you guys don't want to see your sockets in your gear, disable this. 
uh, full descriptions, remove only tabs. This is just for like your stash setup, utility pop-ups, etc. Um, I obviously always show my mana. We always hide life preservation, etc. Uh, flash buffs, icons, bars. It's, it's, it's all pretty self-explanatory for my setup. Uh, cursor size medium. This is basically as big as your cursor gets in game, which is really nice. Like if you get it any bigger, I don't like it. Like, I mean, look how big that is too big for me. My play style. I like medium. Hover, click cursor, etc. I disable global chat. I disable trade chat. I have my guild chat always on. So that's up to you guys. I disable timestamps. And then obviously sounds based on your preferences. I keep it right about here. Otherwise, it sounds like everything blast in your ear. It's really, really bad. So definitely want to keep these lowered, especially if you have um, headphones on or a really powerful sound system. You will blow your eardrums up if you have it up much higher. I do have item filter a little bit louder because the item filter is not too bad. It does kind of overlap your normal um, sound. So very nice. Um, reverb, obviously, mute when in background and disable gameplay event voices. This is key right here, guys. If you do not want to hear the NPCs nonstop every time you interact with them, disable this. It helps a lot because there are so many in game now. Inputs, I'm not going to get over, and notifications, obviously. That's your preferences, what you guys want. All right, guys, this is a 101 on the graphic settings. The next tutorial will focus on in game. So I will see you guys at that one.